welcome back. Today is June 1 and it's about 5 o'clock in the afternoon and I'm about to start reading for the Olympic Games readathon. As a reminder, I am in Apollo's cabin. I am a daughter of Apollo and so I will be following those challenges. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I already released my TBR and so you can go ahead and check out that and I'll have all the details including a link in the description to the original video for this entire readathon. So you can go ahead and look at that video and then check that out. But first, I'm going to get started with the first couple books that I will be reading. So for the beginning of this readathon, the first prompt, as I said in my TBR, is follow the prompt, music to my ears, listen to an audiobook. And as I said for that, I will be listening to The Winner's Curse, and this is by Marie Rutotsky. I'm probably going to say that wrong many times, and I apologize if I am saying this wrong, which I probably am. So I'm going to start this as an audiobook, but the thing is, is that while I do really enjoy listening to audiobooks, I do need some physical book to get reading, and because of that, I'm also going to get started on the second prompt of this, which is read a book that makes you happy, and for that, I chose The Invisible Library by Genevieve Cogman, and so I'm going to start reading this probably tonight. I'm going to go ahead and get started with both of these books, this one as an audio and this one as physical, to just really get a jump start on this month-long readathon. So I will update you guys when I have finished one of these. Hey guys, so it is June 14 and it's about 5.30 o'clock at night and I can finally say that I finished a book. I don't know why I do this, but I do this for every readathon. I will start right away and I'll work very slowly and it just takes me a while. So like we're two weeks into the readathon and I just finished my first book. I'm hoping to pick up the reading in the last half of the month. But for now, I, I am making progress. So, so I finished listening to The Winner's Curse by Marie Rutotsky. I hope I said that right. Um, and this was for the very first prompt of music to my ears, listen to an audiobook. So I listened to this as an audiobook. So this book is about an empire where a group of people conquered another group of people and have turned them into their slaves. And it follows the general's daughter and she kind of goes to the market one day and she goes to the slave market and she sees the slave and she, for some strange reason, just has to buy him. So she buys him and she takes him to her home to be her slave and they kind of form a connection by playing a game called Bite and Sting, but they only play it like two or three times. Then really that's all the summary I can give without spoiling a lot of it just because any point after that and I feel like I'm starting to spoil the book but there isn't much else that's done in the beginning. The thing about this world is that um, her people, it kind of reminded me a lot of Sparta because it doesn't matter if you're male or female, by the age of 20 she has to either enlist in the army or get married. So, and just the mentality of her people is a very Spartan mentality, you know, you fight because you're a warrior and you're tough, um, and the slaves were not able to beat you and therefore are unworthy, so that's what the book is about. And I gotta say, I had heard some kind of eh reviews about it, like people thought it could have been better, but it wasn't, and so I didn't go into it with super high hopes. And I really have to agree with a lot of people. I rated it 2 out of 5 stars, but I would really, it's a higher 2. Like, I really struggled with between 2 and 3. Just because I felt like this book had no meat to it. It had no substance. It was very surface level, simple plot. You know, it just, I wish that it had gone in depth more with the characters, with the plot, with the world building. You know, it just seemed very simple, straightforward, and so it just kind of lacked that emotional tie because there was no depth to any of the characters or anything like that. Um, I wish, like I said, I wish the characters were more fleshed out, but I also wish their relationships were a little more fleshed out because you have the main romance, which just kind of went from like 0, 50, 100, you know, like there wasn't much there, but also the main character and her best friend, Jess. I loved her best friend. 
but she did not get a lot of time in the book and they really didn't get a lot between the two of them and I felt like just the friend was a very nice good character that could have been fleshed out more but then Kestrel was a bad friend and there was like no reason for it and so I was like oh, I was super bummed about that. The ending of the book wasn't actually that bad like there's this whole event that happened right before the end and I felt like that was pretty unnecessary but then the, like the very end of it, it was like okay that's interesting that's a little different that keeps me intrigued so I might read the second one but I'm again I'm not gonna promise anything because this is a readathon and I don't want to be adding extra books on top of the nine that I'm gonna do but like it really didn't seem super interesting until that very ending point and I feel another thing was that everyone was telling her she's gonna be something or she is something she's an advocate for the slaves or you know she is the general's daughter and she's gonna provide information but then she just wasn't anything I felt like she wasn't an advocate for the slaves but she also wasn't helping her people at all either so I just felt like there was so much like oh she's caught in the middle of everything she's gonna make a difference and when really she wasn't doing anything she was just sitting there pitying herself <laughs> um so that was kind of sad but yeah i've been making progress on the invisible library which was the prompt for the second challenge of read a book that i think will make me happy i'm slowly working through that one and i think it's because i think it's gonna make me happy so i want it to last but again that's not how readathons work like i should be reading it and getting it done um, so I can move on to the next book because I'm really excited for that but that's just not quite how I'm doing it and it's kind of a bummer but I did start my other book because I'm going to listen to it as an audiobook it's Angel Mage by Garth Nix and so I've started listening to that and that is for the prompt to read a book that starts with A and I am enjoying that so I think I'll finish that one pretty quickly and then I can hopefully pick up the pace on the invisible library so that I can continue on to the rest of the books in this challenge and especially so because I want to do the Hogsmeade, Hogsmeade challenge or the readathon by book roast with G because like I as you know I have done my owls and I'm going to do my newts but there is there is a Hogsmeade challenge coming up here and like I think it's from like June 22 to June 28 and so with that we can well I'll go in more detail of that but that is adding more books onto my TBR than what I was expecting for this month but I'm gonna try and correlate it so this book goes towards the Hogsmeade challenge and the Olympic Games challenge so that's really what I'm trying to do but it's it's a lot so yeah I don't have too much for this update uh, my thoughts were pretty clear and simple just like the book was it's June 21st and it's a little after 10 o'clock and I am still reading The Invisible Library. I think my thing with this book is that I'm expecting to like it so much and I am enjoying it so much I'm almost halfway that I don't want it to end so I'm reading it really really slowly like I've got like two audiobooks almost done before I finish this one physical book after 21 days <laughs> um so it's going super slowly but i'm really hoping to pick it up in the next day or so so i can start doing what i always do in these readathons and reading like a book a day and just barely making it um so honestly i don't have much of an update i'm really enjoying this i'm almost done with angel mage by garth nix which is the book to cover the prompt of a book that starts with a and I'm listening to that as an audiobook because so that's the only way I'm getting these done apparently. So yeah, that's really all the update I have. Angel Mage is good, like I really like the concept and the world building, but it's not always the easiest to understand. Like you really have to be super invested in the story to pick up all the details and everything that happens. And I haven't always been that, so it's been a little confusing for me because of that. Um, but yeah, hopefully I'll definitely start picking up the pace soon, slash maybe tonight, maybe tomorrow. Um, but yeah, I am going to start the Hogsmeade's readathon. That'll probably be a separate video just because my computer has been really picky with its uh, amount of content that I've been uploading to it. So <laughs> that'll probably be a separate video, but it's going to tie into this one quite a bit. So I'm going to finally sit down and do some reading and hopefully not have it be where I have to read a book a day because some of these books are really long. So 
we'll see. I'm gonna say goodbye for now, and I'll update you when I finished a book or possibly more. Hey everyone, it is Wednesday the 24th and I'm sitting here on my couch. I just got a bunch of reading done. I actually finished a book and I got up to get my next book and then this flufferdoodle right here decided to steal my spot. But now I am back. I finally finished The Invisible Library by Genevieve, by, yeah, Genevieve Cogman. And this fulfilled my challenge of reading a book that I thought would make me happy, and it did. I think it didn't make me as happy as I was hoping, but I still liked it in the end. And I think that was because I chose this book because it was about books and the library and going out on missions to get books for the library. And I love those kinds of books. I love that kind of reading. So I thought that it would kind of fulfill that joy, but I found the majority middle part of it to be more about the murder rather than like finding the book, you know? So like it was good and it was fulfilling, but it wasn't quite what I was hoping for, but it was still really good. I rated it 4 out of 5 stars. I liked the characters. I liked how the characters really stayed true to themselves, except for Kai. He was kind of back and forth a little bit and I was kind of confused on his character but I, I dealt with that and it was okay um, yeah so this book was about this woman named Irene who works for the library the invisible library and basically she goes out and retrieves books from different alternate worlds um, to help keep balance between chaos and order within all these different alternate worlds. It's very intricate world building in terms of how it's all set up, but the world that they were in for like most of the book, I just had a really hard time picturing because it was like how it described what the women had to wear, but then like it had advanced technology, but it still seemed very Victorian and it was just kind of confusing and I had a hard time like getting one image of London that they were supposed to be in kind of set throughout the book but I still enjoyed it the plot was interesting yeah it took me a very long time to read it and I think it's because it did dip in the middle for me a bit and I was really hoping that that wasn't the case I was like no if I just if I go through it slowly or I, I don't pressure myself too much then I'll get it done but I'll like it more and it'll be at a better pace for me and really it just took me forever to read it so right now it is just about 10 o'clock and it's almost dark outside. Like it wasn't dark outside like 10, 15 minutes ago, like the sun is kind of setting. So I'm gonna start the Tiger Curse. This is the one to fulfill the prompt of my prediction um, to be a five star. And as I said before, I don't know if it's necessarily gonna be a five star, but I do think that it is going to be the highest rated book, the book I will most like um, of the ones that I chose for the TBR for this month. Um, so I will start that, but if it does get darker out and I'm still up, I might switch to Kill the Queen because this is what I'm reading for the prompt to honor Artemis and that was to read when it's dark outside. We'll see how late I end up staying and how much of each I read. Uh, I have finished, I have finished three books, so I have finished three of the five prompts, so these are my last two books for the month if I'm just doing the basics for Apollo that I need to do, but I would really like to do some of the extra activities. Um, so I'm hoping to get these two books finished before the end of the month so I can have some time to try and fulfill some of the other activities. So that's my update for now, and I will catch up with you guys once I am I have a better game plan or I'm farther into a book and I have something to say. Also, I totally forgot to like mention that I also finished Angel Mage by Garth Nix today. I finished that audiobook way earlier today and I was like, yes, I got one book done today, maybe I can do another. And then yeah, I did another. Um, so that was also a good one. I believe I gave that 3 out of 5 stars. Um, no, I gave it 4 out of 5 stars because I really enjoyed the world building. The ending seemed kind of rushed, and it 
was very quick and it seems like such a simple fix that it took like one slightly creative mind to come up with when like this person's causing all this destruction and like fear in the hearts of all these people and it's like all you needed to do was this but other than that I really loved the characters each of the four main characters had such strong distinct personalities from each other and yet they worked together so well some of the transitions within the book were a little foggy so I kind of had a hard time like following along with those and kind of keeping up plus I wish there was a little more description of like the world itself like I had a harder time picturing places in my head um, but otherwise I thought it was like a really enjoyable book I just love the concept so much so I finished listening to Angel Mage, which was fulfilling the prompt of reading a book that starts with A. So I have finished The Winner's Curse. I finished the second book, The Invisible... Or then I finished Angel Mage, which accomplished the third prompt that was also accomplished by format of audiobook. But then I went back and I finished the second prompt, and that was The Invisible Library. So I've completed the first three prompts now. So there we go. All right, now I'm going to go back to reading. I feel better, though. It's 2.30 in the morning of Sunday, June 28th. I have not gone to bed because I finished Kill the Queen by Jennifer Estep. I read the first chapter two nights ago. And then last night, I stayed up until 3 o'clock reading the first half of the book. And then tonight, I finished up, or I, I finished the book. And it's 2.30. I started reading at like 11. So, there. I've gotten four out of my five required readings for Team Apollo done. <laughs> Why do I do this to myself? Why do I torture myself like this? I don't know. Um, but I'm a good, maybe a third, almost a third of the way through Tiger's Curse by Colleen Hoke. So I will definitely get this done tomorrow. Even if I have to stay up late like this again, I will get it done so that I will at least complete all the challenges for my cabin and all of the requirements for the readathon. I will be able I will be able to do some of the extras. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do them all <laughs> because because there are only a couple days left in this readathon. So I don't know if I can read four and a half books. Uh one of them will be an audiobook. One of them is 72 pages and is mostly pictures. So I have, I feel pretty good that I'll get those done, but then the other two are both like 400 plus pages, like it's The Toll and Before She Ignites, which are both pretty big books. So I would not count on that, but I again, I can't start those until I finish The Tiger Curse. So there's my late night update for you guys. Um, I will talk more about what I thought about Kill the Queen, either in the morning or just flat out at the end of the video when I kind of do a generic overall, this is what I thought of this book and this book and this book, because I want to go to bed now. So, good night. Hey everyone, it is July 2, and that means that the... Olympic Games readathon is officially over and it has been since the last day of June and I am now going to film this wrap-up. So yeah, I finished more books than the last update you got. I just never really had time to film or I was too tired because I would either finish them late at night or I would finish them and then I'd move on to something else in my life. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do a full kind of wrap up more the overview on some of the other books that I read that I haven't really filmed about. So let's get started with the first book that I read and finished was The 
Winner's Curse, and I listened to this from the audiobook prompt, and I'm actually almost done listening to the sequel, not because I like it, because I feel bad about starting series and not finishing them. So I did finish The Winner's Curse, and then the second book that I finished was actually Angel Mage, and this one I also listened to as, audio as an audiobook, it's by Garth Nix, but I read this one to fulfill the prompt of read a book that starts with A, so then I finished the book for the second prompt. Um, the Invisible Library by Genevieve Cogman. I read this for the prompt of read a book that will make you happy. I enjoyed this book. I didn't enjoy it quite as much as I was hoping. I just feel like there was a lot more mystery of like, the murder rather than like really pursuing the book or getting to know the library or the magic behind all of it. So I was a little disappointed but still made me very happy because it was it was still a good book like it was still a good book it just took me forever to get into it and I think that was because I was afraid that it either wasn't going to be as good as I was hyping it up to myself to be or because I didn't want it to end because it's a book about books and those make me happy so that's why I chose it for the prompt then the fourth book for the fourth prompt I read was uh Tiger's Curse by Colleen Hoke Hope. I'm very sorry for a bad pronunciation I read that because for the prompt of read a book you think will be the highest rated that, well, a five star rating or the highest rating that you give. I didn't think it would be a five star read, I but I read it because I thought it was going to be the highest book that I rated off of the entire TBR. And actually, I rated this three out of five stars, which I was kind of bummed about because for the first half of the book, it was great. There was very few issues about it. Like, I felt the main character, Kelsey, she gets a temporary job working at a circus where she meets this tiger and she kind of grows attached to the tiger because it's a white tiger and tigers are cool. I can't blame her. Um, but then this man approaches her and he is like, I want to take you to India and you're gonna help me break the curse of this tiger and she agrees to go along. Um, and so it's their adventure of trying to break the curse. And it is a series, so it was not completed at the end of this book. Um, but I felt like Kelsey turned 18 at the beginning of the book, but I still feel like she acted like a 14-year-old. Like, she acted well below what her age was, which you don't always see in books. Like, I always feel like characters act above their age because they have to. But for her, I just felt like she acted more childish than young adult-ish, I guess. And then there was this one line that got me a little bit, like, at the beginning of the book, and that's, so the tiger's curses, this man was cursed to be a tiger, but he has 24 minutes of the day with Kelsey to be human. But then throughout the second half of the book is when it started to decline for me personally, because I felt like people were causing drama for the sake of drama, not because of actual things and they started to make relationships and actions more complicated than they needed to be just for the sake of being complicated and a lot of that also stemmed from a lack of communication which if you guys know I hate it when conflict is stemmed purely for lack of communication so when a lot of the conflict that doesn't come from the main plot of the book is from a lack of communication or doing dramatic things just to be dramatic and keep writing it was it started to go down for me and it started to become less interesting and more annoying to read. Like, as the book went on, I started to dislike Kelsey as, like, again, for the first half, maybe two-thirds of the book, I thought she was a great character, you know, good protagonist, yeah, I can get behind her and I can get behind her and Ren, but then she just started to decline and it really just kind of made me be like, oh no, I don't know if I want to keep reading about Kelsey. <laughs> so that that's why I rated it 3 out of 5 stars, because I thought like the first half of it was great, but then the second half it just started kind of going downhill for me personally. Moving on, so then the last challenge that I fulfilled, I did manage to film a little bit of previously, um, and it was the last of the five required challenges for my cabin, and that was to read a book honoring Artemis, and I chose to do Artemis's prompt of reading a book only at night or when it's dark outside, and so for that I read Kill the Queen by Jennifer Estep, and I enjoyed it. I had a few, like, major problems with it, but overall I thought it was just fine. Good read. 
I I would be intrigued to continue reading the trilogy. There are two more books after it that I know of that I would I would be okay with reading if I had the time to devote to that, which I I could, but we'll see. And then so I finished all of the five challenges that I had to, but then I had four prompts to choose from for some bonus challenges for this readathon, and I was able to get two out of the four of those done. I was hoping to do all four, but in the back of my head I knew I wasn't going to get all four, so I was hoping to do at least three. I only did two. One was archery, and that was read a book under than 200 pages, and for that I read The Tea Dragon Society, and I loved it so much that I made my mom read it immediately after, and then I made my dad read it immediately after. It's just a cute story. It's by Katie O'Neill. It's just such a cute story about you know, these dragons and you like harvest leaves off their horns to make tea, but like you gotta care for them and it was just adorable. That's all I can say. And the artwork was beautiful and amazing too. And then the last book that I finished, I literally just sat there and listened to the audiobook all the way through until like three in the morning and was just sitting in my bed with the lights off, listening to the audiobook, being like, I want to finish, I want to get this done. And that was The Queen of Nothing. And this was for The Climbing Wall. Uh, I was to read the next book in a series. So this is the third book in the trilogy by Holly Black, uh, the Airfolk trilogy. And I, as soon as this came out, I had read both of the previous books and I was so excited to read this. And then I just never bought it, so I never read it. No, uh, like a day or so ago, like the last night of the readathon, I just sat there and listened to this audiobook. And I gotta say, it was a good ending to the trilogy. I I liked the ending. It was a very satisfying ending. I feel like it was just kind of a, a kind of a lighter book, you know, not quite super complicated plot or not as much trickery as in the previous books. But I mean, it's also just a shorter book. And it was kind of the ending. So I really didn't mind it. I, I kind of want to read all three books again, one right after another, because there was so much time and space between the second one and the third one. I, I really did enjoy it. And I, I would highly recommend the trilogy because all three books in the trilogy were amazing. And especially like the last one, like for it being short and kind of a lighter read, I thought it was great. Um, I'm debating on making a video just reviewing each of the three books in the trilogy and then the trilogy overall. So if you're interested in seeing that more specific to the Airfolk trilogy for Holly Black, um, then leave a comment down below saying, yes, I would love to watch like a more in-depth review of the trilogy as a whole or of each individual book because that's something I've been more interested in doing lately. And there were two books, like I said, that I did not get to, and one was Before She Ignites. I did start reading this. I'm literally a chapter into it, so I barely started reading it. So we'll see. And then the other one, which was one I really didn't expect to read, but it would have been nice if I could have, but I wasn't going to, was The Toll by Neil Schusterman, because this thing is thick, it is big, it is huge, and for a readathon, and especially with how little time I left myself after I finished the first five books, I knew it wasn't going to happen, but I'm just so excited to finish this trilogy. So this would be honestly another trilogy that I've been sitting here like, okay, I want to film a video of the trilogy as a whole and each independent book just like doing a more in-depth review of because I really enjoyed this trilogy and I really want to talk about it more. So I'm bummed that I didn't get to it, but hopefully those will be two books I get to soon. But as June is over. My fantasy reading is over. So that is the end of this video. Please comment, click subscribe, like the video, and do all that jazz if you want to keep following me during my year-long journey of, of exploring different genres and reading different genres. Or if you're as excited for the reading rush coming up as I am, because I am so excited for that. And with that, I will leave you with a happy reading.